Hey guys, I want to do a real quick video for you today on some LL Bean boots. I've been uh, wearing these guys for the past year, so just wanted to give you my thoughts and impressions, see if they might be the right boot for you. All right, first and foremost, a little background on me. I do lawn and landscaping work in Northern Florida and have for the past 10 years. So these boots see uh, daily conditions that are wet and dirty, grimy, slimy, muddy, just disgusting what we walk through in some lawns and they're constantly getting pelted with rocks and gravel from the roads and everything like that. So yeah, it's uh, mid-December here in, uh, in Florida or mid-December anywhere actually. And uh, yeah, here in Florida today, it was uh, I think 75 degrees. So there's no shortage of daily lawn and landscaping work still going, going strong. We've slowed down a little bit, but uh, yeah, these boots see it all on a, on a daily basis. Uh, these are the original bean boots. They're not that one color, but outside of that, you can get them in the, that one lighter color if you want, but that's what they call these, the original bean boots. The ones that started it all back in uh, 1912, I think is what it said on the site or something like that. Anyway, basically just a one piece upper stitched to a rubber boot bottom. So really nothing fancy about these boots at all. We've got two different styles right in front of you. They're basically the same thing. One's just an eight, the other's a 10. Um, this boot has a little bit of a flannel lining to it, which is the thinnest material you can imagine. And on the footbed, there's on the sides, there's a little bit of a, a felt or something like that. On the 10 inch version, it's as stripped down as you can get it. It's just straight leather right there. And down on the footbed, there's a little bit of something between you and the rubber, but it's even thinner than this material. Uh, the eight inch boot has, uh, uh, the tongue isn't stitched all the way to the top. It just stitched down to the second lace or second eyelet. So you got a wider throat opening there. Uh, this boot, the 10 inch, it goes all the way to the top. All right, so that was one of the reasons I liked the, the 10 inch when I decided to make a switch. Um, this is a little weak point. So if you do step in, like I said, these aren't waterproof or anything like that. So once you get past the rubber bottom, you're taking your chances. So I think I stepped in a big puddle one time or whatnot. And I was like, okay, so we got a little bit of water in through that area. So uh, this next boot, I said, let's go with a 10 inch tall. And I've actually been in the same area that I got wet with these and these did, I didn't have a problem. So uh, the other reason I switched uh, over to the 10 inch boot, not that it's it's the reason why I switched and wasn't running these anymore um, was primarily the sole wear. After six months, these guys started to, started to wear kind of quick. I, I don't know quick. It's everybody walks different and wears different on everything. But you can see basically that little chain link pattern they've got there isn't all that deep to start with. So I figured they would flatten out pretty quick. But um, yeah. Like I said, there's still plenty of material there. I don't think I'm going to punch through that anytime soon, but yeah, I didn't want to be without a pair of boots. So I just went ahead and picked these up and these guys have been sitting on the shelf. So this is right at about six months of wear and that, that's the end of it. Um, I haven't switched them back and forth at all. Uh, the heel wear is, uh, eh, whatever. It's just what it is. Everybody walks a little different and whether you, you know, you're bigger or smaller, I'm on the smaller end of things. Um, yeah, I'm 175 pounds and right at 5'11", so I'm not putting a ton of pressure on these soles or anything, so a little bigger guy probably might wear the soles a little faster. Um, the soles are soft. They're going to wear fast, but they also, I mean, you can put your thumb, so the rubber they use is incredibly soft, um, so that gives you a little bit of uh, impact, so that helps with cushioning, in my opinion. Um, also softer rubber tends to have a lot more grip. I haven't had one issue with these things slipping on me. Like I'm in wet trailers with wet wood and all kind of conditions with what I do. And I haven't had any issue with these things feeling like they're going to skate out on me or, or anything like that. Uh, back to like the wear and the sizing of the boots, I guess. Uh, I'm a 10 in my, I'm a 10 in my running shoes, my Asics and my Nikes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Bean recommends sizing down, maybe one, even two sizes. I went with a size nine on these and that was fine for me, especially in the length, in the width, not so much. They weren't flopping around on my feet loose, but they definitely needed a little bit of something to help me fill in the width on there. Like I said, I'm 175 pounds, 5'11", so, and I've got real skinny feet. There's not any kind of extra 
in my legs or in my feet or anything like that. So if these boots will work for me, 99% of the time they probably will work for you because there's not a whole lot of guys smaller, but there's a lot of guys bigger, you see. So anyway, for, to combat that, I went ahead and just got some thicker insoles and I do wear a little thicker sock and I like to wear socks that kind of go up to my knees anyway to help from trash and everything blowing back off the weed eater and the edger and all that kind of stuff. So that worked out for me uh, to fill in that area. The only other problem I run into on uh, boots a lot of times is I run out of adjustment right there in the throat of the boot. Uh, this is right about the same. This I wouldn't want this opening to be any you know, bigger. So I would need this to be actually smaller. So I have more adjustment here in the laces. Most of the time this gets so close to where it almost wants to start overlapping before I get a good snug feel and feel like it's, I've got the, the boot on good. Um, these are right here at that threshold. So if you are skinnier than I am, which you might be, um, these probably aren't gonna be a good fit for you. Um, if you're a bigger guy, you shouldn't have any problem. You'll, you know, you're gonna have them wide open. You'll have plenty of adjustment in the laces and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I'm on the skinnier side of things and if I can make them work for me, they should be okay for you. It's a pretty light duty boot. There's nothing, no frills about it. Like I said, unlined, there's no Gore-Tex, there's no Thinsulate, there's no anything like that. You know, no composite toe, no steel toe. So you got very minimal protection there. You are very protected against the wet, but outside of that, there's really not a whole bunch, you know, going on as far as, you know, features and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's pretty much just bare bones. What you see is really what you get. Um, yeah, I haven't had, you saw the soles already, uh, the stitching, like I said, come on. Yeah, the stitching on the boot, I haven't had any blowouts or anything come loose. You got a little bit of fraying right there at the ends. I think that's pretty much to be expected with, with anything. There's no separation anywhere um, at all. The boots come in at 160 bucks and it's, you know, the way things are going anymore, I think, would I buy them again? I bought two pairs. For the past year, yeah, that's kind of expensive, but I don't know. I've, I know I've paid a lot more for boots and gotten a lot less out of them. I can tell you that, and I'm not going to name manufacturers, but I'm sure you guys have had similar experiences. So um, I can't tell you about the company's customer service. Luckily, I haven't had to test it out. But yeah, both sets are running about the same. No stitching, no terrible wear on that. This is a this other boot over here has got about three. Well, not shoot three, about four to five months, I guess, of wear on it. So yeah, the company says on their site they can you can resole them for I think forty dollars. Don't quote me on that, but that just seems to be what I think I can remember. And it takes six to eight weeks to do it. You can only do it on certain brands of their boots. I know this is one of them that they say they can do it on. So. I know that's always a concern. People always want to know if you can resole the boots. So if you've got time to, to ship them off, and that's another good thing about having two sets of them, ship this one off, work in these, and then just kind of keep them rotating. Um, yeah, I mean, outside of that, there's really not much else to say. Uh, if you're looking for a good all-around light-duty boot for the farm, for the house, lawn and landscaping, I would say for the money, they're going to be real tough to beat. But uh, at the end of the day, you got to make the call on, on that. But um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hesitate to to recommend these to anybody. That's for sure. So, um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for the review. If you guys, got any questions or comments? Please feel free to leave them down below. If you thought anything in this video was helpful or entertaining or anything, just hit the like button. If you didn't find it useful or entertaining, dislike it. Um, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see from me. If I didn't answer any questions, please. I, I don't have a big subscriber base, so if you need something more detailed, you wanna see me try them on, you wanna know anything else, just let me know down in the comments and, I'll, and I'll, I'll get back to you. I don't have a million people following me, so I can, definitely, I can definitely answer your questions and I always try to do that. So, all right guys, that's gonna do it. Thanks.